your game Liverpool versus Crystal Palace Ooh, game number six so far then we're gonna wind things down with the other matches Leeds United nil Liverpool three Crystal Palace 3, Tottenham Hotspur 0. So both teams won 3 0 in their last games there. In terms of last season, in terms of the last, let me see, eight games between these two teams, Liverpool have won all eight. Last season, a 2 0 win at Anfield, a 7 0 win at, um, damn, what's that stadium name again? Anyway, Selhurst um, Park. Yeah, Selhurst Park. 7 freaking 0. This one could get very, very fuggly. I just want to put it out there. It could get real fuggly, man. Doug, 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 talk to me here. Patrick Vieira versus Jurgen Klopp. The first time these teams are meeting each other. Jurgen Klopp, 10 games against Crystal Palace. Um, 12 games, 10 wins, 2 losses. Talk to me. Yeah, um, look, I think I watched um, I watched both games last week. I thought Crystal Pass, even even before the red card for Dan Ganga, I thought Crystal Pass was absolutely superb. Um, and what a, what a wee arrival for uh, Oddson Edward to make his Premier League account. 27 seconds after coming on as a substitute, he makes it um, 2-0 to, uh, to Crystal Pass. And to be fair, like, I think we're probably seeing now the the stuff that Patrick Vieira wants to get across his, uh, his side. He's not a Frank de Boer. Like people are people are throwing that rubbish uh, about um, you know Patrick Vieira being another Frank de Boer. But you know Frank de Boer didn't win a game. You know Patrick Vieira has now won a game, and <laughs> ironically, it was against Tottenham as well. Yeah, that was a good display, though. Um, I think that would put a lot of confidence into the Crystal Palace faithfuls, seeing that they're playing some attractive football. They have a sense of direction. While with Roy Hodgson, he was more of a manager that's always going to get the job done. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like that old man at your job. You wonder, why do they keep him? But little do you know, he's loyal and he gets the job done. That's what he's always going to show up to work. He's going to show up on time. He's not going to complain much. And he's not really going to mess around with the ladies on the job. You know what I'm saying? And he's not going to steal company time. That what you yeah. get from Roy Hudson. But with Vieira, you're going to have some, some flair. And you could see by the players he brought in. They went and they got Hudson um, Edward from Celtic when Arsenal has been linked with this guy and he comes and what he does score twice off the bench it looks like a Vieira masterclass and I think it is I think it really is the players look like they're backing their manager and they, they want to actually maybe get into the top 10 this season I know it could maybe it's a long shot but I won't be surprised I really won't be surprised if Crystal Palace gets into the top 10 but Ah, playing Liverpool might not be the way they're going to get it done. Just just want to put it out there right about now. Doug, I got a question for you, bro. How do you think... Um, I know you, you talked about Vieira before, but how do you think Vieira has done so far? And in your opinion, how do you think he'll do ultimately at the end of the season? Um... <sighs> I think he he's had a, he had a tough start with you know against Chelsea. I think Chelsea were were very very good in that game. You know he he played he played against um, played against Brentford, and um, that was a nil nil draw. But I look I look at I look at Pass and I think they've actually got a very very good side ahead of them. I I I honestly think that they'll be comfortable. I I don't see any relegation trouble for them. I think I had them about twelfth or thirteenth this season. Um, so I wouldn't be too surprised if they finish finish in that position. But for me, that I think I think they'll be fine. I think Vieira is now getting his ideas across, and I think Palace will be Palace will be okay. Palace will be safe. Yeah, you could see. Um, I think Crystal Palace is now playing a four three three formation. They brought in guys like Anderson, Guehi, and you have Conor Gallagher from Chelsea on loan. He's been the best player in my opinion so far this season. Yeah. Kuyate, you know what I mean? He's finally gone out from the the center back position and he could now strut his stuff just in front of the center backs. Still have MacArthur there, Zaha, you know, with that flair. I think Zaha was really good in the last game though. And I think mm -hmm. the Tanganga whole thing with Ta Zaha is the type of player, and Liverpool has to be very, very careful of this guy, Zaha. He's going to get under your skin. 
Trent Alexander yeah. Arnold, look out for this guy. This guy's gonna get under your skin. You probably wanna push him if if we, we see a, a situation where you know what I mean Zaha likes to do things like that. It's always something with him. Remember, recently he he spat at someone, and it's like he, he, it's it, I don't know what it is with this guy Zaha though. I think it was um Shaletto. Um, Ezekiel Shiletto Brighton versus Crystal Palace a couple seasons ago so he'll yeah. get under your skin and he has that quality to hurt you as well just want to put that out there but the player to watch is of course Hudson Edward off the bench you know what I mean they, they have um, Mateta as well he wasn't um, he didn't feature in the last game maybe he's injured they, they, they show in a lot of intent Michael Olesay was was brought and a youngster there so Big up to Crystal Palace, man. But Doug, look, I want to get to the tougher questions, and that's why I wanted to get this this match in early in the segment. Talk to me about Liverpool's title chances. I know in your initial prediction at the beginning of the season, you did not have the Reds winning the title. But what are your what what is your stance right now that the season have started and we saw what every team is gonna is gonna actually bring in terms of the the arsenal not not a arsenal fc but the arsenal they 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 you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the players they brought in and everything um it's like i think it's all about injuries for us um you know we've got a very good 11 and then maybe 12 13 14 players and then after that, you know, it it's the quality on the bench that is the worry. We've got a very, as I've said, we have a very, very good first 11. And then probably, you know, three, four players after that. It's just, we have a lack of, we've got a lack of depth up front now. Midfield, we're packed. We're absolutely packed for that. And then centre-backs, we are packed. God God forbid we are, you know, we're, we're, we're packed there. Goalkeepers, we're packed. So... If a Mane or a Salah or a, a Jota get injured, then we're you know we're back to square one. I mean, you have to obviously Harvey Elliott is now injured. Um, you know you've got Minamino, you've got Origi, who to be fair, Origi played very very well last night. He, he, he I thought he was excellent um, yesterday. As you said, he was a bit uh, was a bit rusty. He came off with, with cramp as well. It's all about injuries for us. Um, yes, the reason I did not predict us to win the league. Is because I look at the I look at City's squad, I look at Chelsea's squad, I look at United's squad, and you know they've they've managed to you know strengthen in positions where where we haven't. And I think that the window for us was all about getting players signed up for new contracts. But yes, I mean you can do that whenever, whenever like you can do that in any time of the season as well. So I think it's all about injuries for us. If we if we can keep Van Dijk fit, we can keep you know a Salah fit, we keep a Mane fit. Then I think I think we'll be we'll be fine. But I think we'll just come up short because of the African Cup of Nations coming up in January. We lose um, Mane, we lose Salah, and we lose Keita as well. So, but I do think we'll just come up short. And um, I, it was a realistic prediction, if I'm being totally honest, because you know City have got the strength and depth. Chelsea have got, you know, a lot of strength and depth in, in Tuchel. And I think we always struggle against low blocks as well. So when, when you're playing teams with, with a low block, we always seem to struggle. You look at the Chelsea game um, when they went to 10 men, defended very, very astutely as well. So I think we, I think we can... Look, the, the one thing I said in that video was, I hope we can challenge at least. That's all I want is to challenge because last season was a season like no other, basically. You know, we had 22 centre back partnerships, which is absolutely mental. But to finish third, considering we were eighth with 13 games to go, was, was incredible. So as long as we're, you know, a few points behind or, or anything, then we can say that we at least challenged and then it can build up for next season. Well said, man. I appreciate you answering that question, though. I think you touched on the fact that Chelsea, Man City, Man U, their summer spending have eclipsed that of Liverpool's, and that may have given them the advantage. And when you look at the fact that Harvey Elliott was promoted 
from the youth team. He was out on loan, but he was promoted. He he was like a new sign-in for Liverpool. And then that horrific injury that happened against Leeds. So it brings the summer signing down to one, Ibrahima Konate. And we haven't even seen him yet. So, and you did mention the African Cup of Nations. I think those guys would miss about two, two games, three games tops. So it won't be a big, big deal. But as I said before... Two games could be a big deal because if you mm. look at we City won the title by one point, and let's say those players are not available, and you you come short a few points, you could you, you could come short of a few points of the Champions League places or even the title. So these are things, man. I did listen. I think I was actually one of the first persons on YouTube. I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna take credit for it. That says the key to Liverpool doing well this season is keeping players fit. I said it while I was on vacation in August, and I meant it. And it's all it's coming to fruition. I'm not wishing bad on Liverpool, but the club needed to bring in players in order to 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 have backup. Because if you look at Chelsea City, United, uh, maybe not United to a but Chelsea City, there's there's a lot of redundancies there in terms of uh, certain positions. Maybe for City, it's not the left back. But for Chelsea, surely they're left back. All positions for Chelsea. So I think that's where Liverpool could come up short in terms of their title challenge this season. I want to hear your thoughts in terms of who you think will come out victorious in this match. Liverpool versus Crystal Palace. Well, good wee thing uh, that we're playing at 3 o'clock because the last 3 o'clock game we played against Crystal Palace, we won 4-3. So I'm hoping that it is not anything like that. Um, I think we will win. I'm actually giving Palace a goal because I think I think they will they will, they will will pose a, a big, big threat at Anfield. But uh, I'm going to go 3-1 to Liverpool. Well said, well said. Um, unfortunately for me, this game is going to be a little difficult to actually follow because City will be playing Southampton at the same time. I will have two screens. I'll try my best to watch both games because I like to review the Liverpool matches as well. I've been reviewing the Liverpool games since, uh, I think, when you guys got to the first Champions League um, final and I've been doing it ever since. So, I think the Liverpool fans love to hear when I talk about Liverpool anyways. Right, right. You're watching this right now, yeah, right? Yeah, I know. So I do have a a two 0 win for Liverpool. I don't think you guys will concede. I think Virgil Van Dijk gives you that insurance policy back there. Him along with Matip, if Matip does feature, I think you know Trent Alexander Arnold very good going forward, but he has to keep working on his positioning though. I talked about him last night in my live stream, bro, and I showed some clips, and I'm telling you, Trent was at the same position for the for both goals, running back, finding himself ball watching helpless in those two AC Milan goals. And a lot of times when teams score against Liverpool, it's down that side. It's down that side. Trent, bro, I know Liverpool fans rate you highly, but you are not a defender you are wing her and a midfielder even even Southgate showed us recently you're a midfielder and a winger you're not a defender if you want to be rated as a defender above guys like Reese James and Kyle Walker and and co up your defensive side of your game so he, he's been trying to be fair but I think it's going to be 2-0 to Liverpool though um let us know your prediction in the chat before we do move on so um in terms of the next games here liverpool we did talk about the fact that they play norwich city and then they have brentford in the premier league next week for crystal palace their next game will be against brighton and hove albion then they play leicester so winnable games in my opinion for palace but let's see how it works out i i like i like what Vieira is doing so far just want to put that out there 